Hey there, my name is Kirk here again from OptionAlpha.com and welcome to my video talking about the um, investment ideas that I have for this year for you. So we don't have much time, so we're gonna get right into it. I wanna give you a couple quick promises of what we're gonna go over in today's agenda. Of course, as always with me, it's gonna be no fluff, no assumptions. Everything that we do is based on facts and data. We're not assuming anything. We don't, we're not smart enough to guess the market direction. So everything that we're gonna do is based on facts and data and we'll show you all of that here in today's video. Number two, we're going to talk about how market implied volatility is always overstated and why this single element <clears throat> with regard to options trading gives us our edge in the market. And again, I'll show you some of that, that data here in a second. Number three, we're going to talk about why you have to be an option seller and we're going to prove that Warren Buffett is actually a very, very big time option seller uh, in a huge way, in a $5 billion way that nobody ever talks about. And then number three, we're gonna talk about what I think is the best opportunity in the oil sector right now to kind of take all this information that we're learning and apply it into a really good opportunity to trade some oil options. So here's the deal, you get to decide. And this is an easy decision, and I say this to everyone that I coach and teach, is that you can always rely on random shot in the dark stock picks, trades, hope you make money long term, right? And I think that's what everyone tries to do. They try to chase the market, they try to figure out how the market works, but you can also decide to do something a little bit different. And hopefully I take you down a path today if you're not already trading options or if you are, you see some stuff that's a little bit different, that you recognize that options trading actually is a huge opportunity for you to make smarter decisions with your money. And that's what we're gonna to try to do here today. Now, undoubtedly more important than your understanding of the Black-Scholes model for option pricing, which we purposely don't cover anywhere in our training, is your ability to understand statistics and expected move probabilities. So if you don't get the math behind the trades, I promise you're gonna fail. I mean, that's a guaranteed promise. You have to understand how this business works. You gotta understand the math. And yes, it's a little complicated, it's not algebra, but I mean, we're all professionals here, we're all investors, we need to know the numbers before we get into anything. So what I say is swallow your pride, learn this stuff now, or I promise you, you're gonna be chasing the market the rest of your life. So let's talk about implied volatility, expected versus actual move. So one of the ways that we gain our edge in the market selling options is because implied volatility tends to overstate the actual expected move of a stock in nearly all cases long term. Now, we are believers that the markets are efficient in the sense that there's no price edge you can gain picking stocks directionally. And we've proved this actually with a 17.34 million trade backtesting study over the last 20 years, which of course you can find on our website. But when it comes to option pricing, we can prove, however, that selling rich options has been one of the rare historical and again profitable edges. So here's how we're gonna do it. First, we're gonna look at the major S&P 500 index. Now the VIX, which most of you know is the fear index, is used actually to measure or forecast the 30-day future volatility of the SPX. Now on the next page, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at a chart that tracks the VIX, so the actual VIX reading, a chart of the actual realized, or against a chart of the actual realized volatility 30 days from the time of measurement. And so what this is trying to do is basically answer the question that if the market and if options are pricing in, let's say, a 10% move in the S&P 500, do we actually see a 10% move in the next 30 days? Or do we see a 12% move or an 8% move? What does the market actually expect to happen and what actually ends up happening in the future? So this is a really cool chart. And basically what you do here is you see that there's two lines on this chart. There's a red line, which is here. There's a more defined line. This is that red line that shows what actually happened over the next 30 days at any point in the future, in the, in the past. The gray line, which is a little bit more shaded, this is the actual VIX reading for the S&P over these time periods. And so what you see here is that although there's some periods like in 2008, and briefly in 2011, where the market moved more than expected, and that's always gonna happen. In the vast majority of trading, the market always moves less than expected. So like, for example, here, on this date back in maybe the middle or early 2011 here, the market was pricing in an expected move of around 30% per year in stocks. So if you divide that out to 12, that'd be the you know monthly amount that they were expecting stocks to move, about 30% per year in the entire market. And the market only ended up moving during that same time period only 10, 15%. So the market was pricing in this huge expected move 
and option pricing was swelling and was really high. Everyone was really panicked that the markets were going to have this huge move and the market only ended up moving 10%. So what that tells you is that the market always over anticipates a move in either direction, right? And it, it's not that it does it every single time, it's that it does it more often than it doesn't. And that's the whole idea here. So on average, the VIX expected the market to have a slightly more volatile environment than had been realized over the last eight years, at least with this chart right here, and it still stays consistent even going forward into the future now. The average difference between the VIX and actual volatility during this period was about 3.25%. So on average, the market was expecting, uh, or the, the option pricing was expecting a 3.25% more bigger move in either direction, up or down, than actually ended up happening. So let's use a, a quick example here with Apple stock from a little while ago. You can see Apple stock um, at the time that we did this picture was at 112.98. Implied volatility in Apple stock right now, and hopefully you guys can see this right here, is 0.3569. So the market at this time period was expecting Apple to move 35% per year. And for Apple, that's about average, okay? Maybe even a little high, but about average for how Apple has moved historically. But the whole idea here is that this number long-term is gonna be overstated by some margin. Meaning that when the, when the market actually plays out, when Apple actually trades from today forward one year, if the market was expecting a 35% move, we might only see maybe a 30% move in Apple, right? So, and it's gonna happen by you know a different margin every time. But long-term, the market always over-anticipates what a stock is gonna do either up or down. And again, that creates an opportunity for us as option sellers. So again, it's important to realize that option buying and paying a premium for this potential move up or down is a net loser long-term in any market. No matter how great you are at stock picking, you can't fight the fact that option pricing is naturally over expecting moves. And that's just a reality. So a long-term net buyer of options is going to lose no matter how great you are at stock picking. The only consistent and reliable strategy in this is the systematic selling of options, especially when implied volatility is extremely high. And again, this is where our edge is maximized. We have a great edge in most cases long-term, but we wanna maximize our edge. So let's quickly get into why Warren Buffett is an options trader. And you're probably thinking to yourself, how, what, is, or what is Warren Buffett doing with options, right? Like he's a big stock guy, he's a huge proponent of long-term investing, but the reality is, is that when you actually dig into what he does, you'll see that he's actually really, really big time options trader. Now again, just to be 100% clear, I'm not saying that he just trades options, but he does recognize the huge opportunity to use them as leverage for his portfolio, and he's made a ton of money doing it. So let's look inside at Berkshire Hathaway's annual report real quickly. This is where we're gonna see how he's trading options in a big way. And again, this is all public information, but what you have to understand is that in the last three years, he's made $5 billion in profits trading options and specifically selling options, which is what we talk about here. So if it's good enough for Warren Buffett, don't you believe it's good enough for yourself as well? All right, so let's get into it here for a second. So here we are inside of Warren Buffett's um, 10K for 2014. So at the time of this video, it was not available for the 2015. It's gonna be exactly the same because the market was pretty much flat this year. But inside of his management discussion, and again, this is all public information, page 51, you can go back here and check it if you want to. He talks about all of his derivative contract trading and especially equity index put option contracts that he sells. And he lays out in this, in this entire report exactly how they do it. But here's the key. In 2014, they produced a pre-tax gain of 506 million. In 2013, he produced a pre-tax gain of 2.6 billion. And in 2012, it produced a pre-tax gain of almost $2 billion. Now look, again, at the end of the day, I'm not telling you anything that's fluff. This is all information you can back, you can back test, check, look at it yourself, but the numbers are here. It doesn't lie. He's doing options trading, specifically selling index put options in a huge, huge, huge way, and he continues to do so. In another page, this is uh, page 96, if you wanna go back here and look at it, he talks about you know basically the net fair value of what he's got right now, which is $4.5 billion of kind of leftover equity index put options. And he talks about how they determine their valuation, which is option pricing, which we just talked about, and basically their biggest input, which is implied volatility. And look, again, he lays out the entire thing here for you so that you can see exactly what he's doing. And it's not that he 
doesn't talk about this, but I wish he were to talk about this a little bit more because you can find it every single year, every single quarter, that he's a consistent and reliable uh, option seller that recognizes how implied volatility is overstated. So again, if it's good enough for Warren Buffett, it should be good enough for you. So here's the deal as we go forward here. What am I trading right now? Now, I believe that right now, at the time of this video, we have a tremendous opportunity to sell historically overpriced options in the oil sector. For me, this mainly includes ETFs such as USO, OIH, XLE, and XOP. So I wouldn't really focus on any of the regular stock names like uh, Chevron or Exxon. I would focus on the ETFs. And that's because we try to mimic a lot of what Buffett does and what we know to work is focusing on the ETFs, which have a little bit less uh, asystematic risk, okay? An ETF is not gonna get bought out by a company. It's not gonna go bankrupt. Now, in this case right now, my favorite strategy is the short strangle. Now, short strangles are very high probability. They're neutral trades, so you're not taking a directional assumption where you sell one call and you sell one put far out of the money. In English, what this means is that you're selling these options away from where the stock is trading right now. Now these strategies are the ultimate setup in my opinion because they give the underlying stock room to run and they give you a profit when implied volatility drops. So again, our whole system here is taking advantage of the fact that implied volatility is always overstated and whenever possible, we're gonna try to sell options when implied volatility is at its highest level so that our, our edge is maximized. So really quickly, let's look at a trade that I literally just put on the other day in XOP, okay? So this is gonna give you a really good example of what we're doing. So this is a chart of XOP. Uh, this is the Spiders Oil and Gas uh, ETF. And you can see that obviously we've had a huge decline in oil over the last year or so. But as a result of that decline, we've seen these nice rallies in implied volatility. So this chart down here below is an indicator that we developed that basically ranks implied volatility and tells us if it's relatively high or not. And you can see that, you know, basically back in July and August, we saw a rise in implied volatility and then a drop in implied volatility. And right now we're seeing that same kind of systematic rise and we're going to get another systematic drop in implied volatility. It's nothing different than what Buffett does and millions of other hedge funds and traders do is take advantage of this implied volatility. So Right now, we've got implied volatility that's in the 77th percentile, meaning that most of the time over the last year, it's been lower than where it is right now. And so that gives us an opportunity to sell some options that are overpriced historically and take advantage of this uh, with a high probability trade setup. So what we did in XOP is we went out to the March contracts and we basically set up a very neutral trade. So right now, and this is live market as we're trading right now. So right now, uh, XOP is trading at 2791. You can see it's moving. And the March contracts have about 43 days to go. And you can see already inside Thinkorswim here, we've got this position arrow that basically means that this is a real trade. It's live, real money. It's not like a simulated trade that I'm doing here. But in the case of March, these uh, contracts have 43 days to go. So this trade's only in effect for about 43 days. We're not holding them you know, incredibly long. Our average trade duration is anywhere from 20 to 45, six, you know, 50 days maybe on, on, uh, on the higher end here. But with the stock trading at about $27, $28, what we went out and did is we sold the 21 puts down below the market. Those puts have about a 13.72% chance of going in the money. So about 13% chance of losing meaning there's a 13% chance that the stock goes from where it is right now and closes below our strike price at 21 by March expiration. Okay, so very high probability that it doesn't get down to 21. Now at the same time, we went up, up above the market and we sold the 33 calls above the market. And you can see they have relatively the same probability of losing. So there's about a 14.56 and moving chance that XOP trades from where it is right now at 27.92 and goes up and closes above our 33 strike, okay? So basically what this means is that we have an inside range of roughly 70%. So we sold down below the market, I just had 21s and 33s. So we have the 21 put options, which are down here. We sold the 33 calls, which are up here. So as long as XOP stays anywhere inside of this shaded range, we make money on this trade. This is why I love options trading because we're not making any type of directional bet here. We're just making a neutral bet. We're saying, hey, you know what? Stock stay inside of this range 
And if you do stay inside of this range, which we know is gonna happen based on all option pricing and probability 70% of the time, we know the stock is gonna stay inside that range, then we have an opportunity to collect the premium that we sold and keep that money. Again, it's no different than what Buffett did with equity index options. He sold the premium and he's been slowly collecting the payout from those premiums year after year, month after month. So that's the trade that we're building uh, and that style of trade that we're building all over the oil and gas sector. We've got USO right now, we've got XOP, OIH, XLE. We're doing everything that we can here because this is a rare opportunity to start selling options in a very smart and systematic fashion. Uh, and hopefully that makes sense in, in going through all this here with you guys today. So here's the deal as I kind of uh, wrap up here. I want you to start thinking about building a plan. I hope that you enjoyed today's quick presentation. I know we probably covered a lot here, but we didn't have too much time. I want to make sure that I'm respectful of the guidelines for this online investing summit and making sure we get this video uh, in under that time period. But if you did enjoy it, please share it online. Help spread the word about what we're doing here at Option Alpha. The whole idea is that you're starting to build a mathematical-based approach to your investing that takes basically you out of the equation because honestly, we hold ourselves back mentally. We try to assume things. We get emotional with our, our investing decisions. I mean, I've done it. You've done it. We've all done it. So we need to start thinking a little bit smarter about how we approach investing. If you're going to approach options trading or any investing, I think it's got to be a math-based approach. Uh, approach. Uh, and hopefully we laid out a really good uh, kind of case study and, and example here today using options. So if you enjoyed this video, I again would appreciate a comment or shoot me an email, let me know or share it online. Until next time, happy trading.